Hi guys, in this lecture video, we will quickly introduce chemical reaction and discuss chemical equations. Now so, life essentially consists of millions of chemical reactions that are happening simultaneously in our body right now. And in fact, it's due to this reaction right here that allow us to stay alive. And even long after we are dead, then chemical reactions are still happening in our body. And because chemical reactions are very important, therefore we need to be able to predict the product of a chemical reaction. So we see the predicting the react products to a chemical reaction is highly valuable in chemistry. And again, because this is important, since it supports life. And if we were to be given a reactant and some reagent and how they react to each other, we need to be able to predict what would be the products that are produced in this reaction right here. And in order for us to do that, we need to be able to learn to be to distinguish the different types of chemical reaction and more importantly, understand how electrons move. Now, how electrons move is something that we will continue to learn throughout all chemistry courses, especially in organic chemistry. But here in this class, we will focus on the most basic chemical reaction. And we again still have to learn how, under, uh, how electrons move. And anytime we mention of the word chemical reaction, a chemical reaction basically refer to the change in the identity of a substance. If we were to have a substance and later on that substance is changed to something else, then what happened is that that substance has to undergo a chemical change or a chemical reaction. So in the course of a chemical reaction, new substances are then produced. And as a chemical reaction is happening, there's many physical evidence that tell us that they're happening. For an example, color chain. If we mix two things together and now we see the colors are changing, then color change is a physical evidence that tells us a chemical reaction is happening. For an example, as we are adding some liquid here through this pipette right here, we see how the color are changing to be, become more pink down here. And another physical evidence that tells us a chemical reaction happening is the formation of a solid. Formation of a solid is also referred to as a precipitate. And for an example, let's say here we, here we take this beaker right here, and we now pour this into another container. And now we see this yellow solid that forming on the bottom. This yellow solid right here that forming on the bottom, this is known as the precipitate or a solid. And third, gas evolution. When we mix two things together, and now somehow we're seeing gas being produced. So the production of a gas is another physical evidence that a chemical reaction is happening. So here in this case right here, we can see a lot of bubble forming inside this solution. And fourth, evolution or the absorption of light. So if we were to do something and now we see light being produced, then again, that is a chemical reaction. For an example, the light being produced here in a Bunsen burner. That is because a chemical reaction or a combustion reaction is happening. Another example is if you have ever played with glow stick before, then that is another evidence that light, the production of light is the result of a chemical reaction. So when you play around with glow stick, essentially what you have to do first is to crack the tubes. And what happening is that the inside that tubes, there is another smaller tube inside, the plastic tube that is outside. So as we crack it, we basically crack in the inner tubes and we allow the liquid from the inner tubes and the outer tube to react with each other. And now they can, we can initiate the chemical reaction. And as the chemical reaction happens, then now light is being produced. So that's another example right there. So, and the, that would be the emissions of light right there. So this are some of this physical evidence that tell us a chemical reaction is happening. And as a chemical reaction happen, then the initial identity of the substance, I think that we call them the reactant. And what they ultimately become, we then call them the products. 
and chemical reaction can be further described or represented by using a chemical equation. Now, so now let's go over chemical equation. As a chemical reaction is happening, describing a chemical reaction by using their names is not is not the most efficient way of describing a chemical reaction because as we describe it using these names and information it is packed with so much information in there that it becomes very difficult for someone to basically figure out what's going on in the course of a chemical reaction so uh, in science, we do not just describe a chemical reaction uses, using only words, but we also write the chemical equation to describe it as well. So this is, like, this is basically a picture that allows us to see a whole lot of detail of what is happening in a chemical reaction. So in the chemical equation, we will be using chemical formula rather than names instead of words to describe the chain that occurs in a chemical reaction. And below here would be the generic format of a chemical equation. So basically, the reactants and all the chemical formula of all of the reactants are then written on the lit on the left side of this arrow. And this arrow right here means chain. In science or in chemistry, whenever we draw an arrow after something, then we say in a chain is happening to that substance. And here in this case right here, the formula of the product is then put on the right side. By seeing that the formula of the reactant and the product are different, that means the substances are changing. And in this case right here, it will be a chemical chain, since the formula of the reactant and the product are different. So therefore, that is an indication of a chemical reaction error. So this error right here, you think called the reaction error. And again, error means chain. And in this case, because the formulas of the products and reactant are different, it is a chemical chain. Or a chemical reaction and here's an example right here if someone were to describe this reaction solid sodium plus liquid water yield hydrogen gas plus sodium hydroxide plus heat so from the names of all of these substances right here it can get pretty confusing of what is going on and so we can further write the, convert this statement right here into a chemical equation and it would then be as follow Na reactant, so that E and Na here have the S sign to it, and we'll describe what that S means in, in, in a little bit. Plus water, producing hydrogen gas, and the form of hydrogen gas is H2, and plus sodium hydroxide, and the form of sodium hydroxide is NaOH, and plus the heat that being produced. So we basically just converting all of these names into chemical formula. So it's quite easy for someone to take a look at this chemical equation right here and figure out exactly what is going on. And here would be a picture of sodium metal right here. So, so here's all the sodium metal. And right now we're keeping this sodium metal right here in oil because these are very reactive. If we expose them to the air, they will combust immediately. So therefore we have to keep them in oil. And then you will gonna take out one of this piece of solid right here and then put this into a beaker of water. And what we would then observe would then be what happening right now. A flame is being produced. And the products would then be hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide. So now let's go over the symbol. The symbol S, L, G, or A, Q after the formula of each of this reactor. So what do they mean? Then this basically describes the physical state of each of the reactant and the products if we know them. So if we were to know a substance to be a solid, then we would then use the parenthesis S and that means it is a solid. Versus a parenthesis L means the substance is a liquid. And if it is a gas, then it will be a G. And now an AQ, an AQ stands for an aquid. An aquid is basically a substance that now been dissolved in water. So here in this case right here, Sodium hydroxide is called an aquid. The reason why is that once it has been produced, it actually gets dissolved in the water because we have a lot of water here in this reaction. So therefore, it is now been dissolved in water. And thus, we call that as an aquid.